Hey, Claude Pallon here, Affiliate Starting Line. Welcome. This is going to be uh, the second part of uh, Chapter 4 in our ongoing series on the SEO Miles Beginner's Guide to SEO. In uh, the last video, we covered the first half of this chapter, which involved two important concepts. One, that search engines read HTML uh, indexable content, that is HTML, HTML text format, and they don't read images, fi uh, <coughs> flash files, Java, Java applets, etc. And the video goes into that and explains, for example, here's a, a, a website where uh, it's got indexable content on the right hand, on the left hand side is what the humans see, on the right hand side is what the search engine sees, and you can see there's data there. Another site that is written in Flash, you can see what the human sees, and you can see that the uh, search engine doesn't see anything. So nothing's going to get indexed, it probably won't get ranked. And then uh, uh, it explains, secondly, that you need to have links very clearly spelled out, a link structure laid out, and uh, so that your, the, the crawlers can figure out where all your pages are. In WordPress, you can do that using XML sitemaps. And um, so there's a way of making sure that all of your URLs are clearly uh, laid out and the links are laid out for the the search engines, and then there's a page here that explains what the search engines can't do, and we went over that in the last video. So the second half that's important is right here, is keywords, keyword usage and targeting. And the second half of the, of the chap chapter here uh, involves understanding how keywords are used by the search engines to um, A, make a note of what's been typed in, B, how it goes back into the database and looks for parsed information that that correspond to that keyword in order to pull it up. And that's uh, where you, if you've done your homework done properly, would uh, show up in the search engine results page. It debunks the whole myth of uh, keyword density. There used to be a theory that you needed a 3%, a 5%, a 7% uh, keyword density in your, in your content. According to SEO miles and the experiments that they've been conducting, that is a myth that doesn't hold. So don't worry about that, but that doesn't mean and it does mean that you still need that keyword in your content uh, throughout. And when it begins to talk about on-page optimization, it goes through and tells you, you know, use it in your in the title of your of your post or your or your page, and use it possibly twice in the title if you can do it. Uh, use it in the H1 header tag uh, in WordPress. So there's a video that I show of what those header tags are, but you want an H1 header tag with the keyword in it. In the content, even though there's no uh, uh, proof that uh, there's keyword density matters, you want at least to have that keyword at least three times in the body of the content. And, much, and more often, if it makes sense and it looks natural, you want that keyword to be bold at least once. Uh, you want to make sure that if there are any images in your content that the alt attributes, that is the alt text that describes to the search engine what that image is about because it can't see the image, you want to make sure that that text that it describes it has the keyword in it. You want to make sure that the keyword is in your URL. You will do that on uh, with a WordPress blog because there's a way to organize the settings so that your blog title is in the URL. Presumably your keyword will be there with it. And you, least, uh, you want at least once, sometimes twice in the meta description tag. So when you're setting up your on-page optimization, you're going to want a meta title tag with the keyword in it. You want your description, which is the, what is used in the snippet in the search engine results pages to describe what's on the page. You want your keyword to be there at least once, sometimes twice if you can get it in. And then it, it tells you why anchor text uh, using that keyword pointing outside of the content it may not be the way to go. And it, it points you to a blog post that explains why. And then it goes into greater detail about how to set up your title tag. Uh, it tells you you've got 70 characters to make the most out of, the, of that real estate. Um, you want your keywords to be up in, in the first words in that title tag if you, if you can. And you want to leverage uh, your branding if you can as well. Uh, it goes into making sure that the title tags are, are, are easily readable and, uh, you know, create an emotional impact. Then it goes into the meta tags, which is what you'll get if you go load up all-in-one SEO or Platinum SEO in WordPress. It explains to you a little bit about how those meta tags work, uh, whether in, and there's in Platinum SEO, you, you, you can determine whether you want that post to be indexed or not, whether you want it to be establish a follow or no follow tag and archived or not, how you want it set up with DMOZ. All these options here, you can find plugins that will do that for you automatically and give you the options to, to uh, 
choose them. Meta description, it tells you what to do in the meta description tag, how to optimize it. It tells you that the meta keywords uh, uh, tags are not as important as they used to be. I would load them in anyway. And then it goes on and explains to you how important URL structures are and how, you know, you want that URL in the um, address bar in, in the, when uh, it's pulled up uh, by the search engines. Go the WordPress blogs do that automatically for you. There, there's a way of setting up your permalink structure so that the title of your post is right in the URL and that'll put your keyword there. Uh, it tells you how to construct the URL to make it easy to read, to make it shorter, uh, to, not to, uh, to, to stuff it with keywords. Um, and it goes on to, to make, explain how to use hyphens and other uh, attributes to, to, to separate your keywords if you need to. Um, and then it goes on to describe how you want to avoid duplicate content on your site by, uh, because very often some sites may have the same page or same information appear in different parts of the site. Search engines don't like that because it replicates content and it's duplicate. So uh, it ex this section explains how you can use a, a, a tool called a 301 redirect uh, to do that, to solve that problem, to point all of the, the duplicate content pages to one page so that uh, they get indexed, it get, that information gets indexed properly. And then it also gives you another way to do that through the a canonical URL tag and explains what it is. Um, and then it, it ends with uh, how you can defend yourself against people who may take your content and replicate it on their sites and how you want to uh, set up a service called Pingamatic, which will allow you to establish with the, the search engine that you have created that uh, content and, uh, and how uh, the links to your, to your homepage should include the URL of your site and not just the term home. And in other words, it gives you a, a, a tactic to defend yourself against having your content hijacked by uh, unscrupulous online advertisers or uh, webmasters. And so that's it. That's uh, what chapter four of the SEO Moz uh, Beginner's Guide to SEO talks about. It's a, one of the most important chapters in the book, and it's one that you should pay attention to. Just to make a, a point of what they're getting at, uh, this is a, a SEO competition module that shows uh, about what the competition is for LCD TVs. Let me turn off the off-page factors. You, we don't need to worry about those right now. But you see on the on-page, this is exactly what they're talking about in Chapter 4. Th these, this is a very competitive space, and you can see how well optimized these competitors are. Uh, they've got this keyword, LCD TV, in their titles, in their URLs, in their description, in their headers, and the, the top two positions have that. The guys right below them are missing one, you know, they're missing that keyword in the description, and uh, some of them below there don't even have it, and they're still ranking, which is incredible. And here's, you can see how many people are on-page optimized. So it's very important as step one to be on-page optimized. There are plenty of other factors off-page, as they show you here, that can determine whether or not, on, you know, the supplement and complement on-page optimization in some cases may be more important, like backlinks. But we'll get into that in other videos. So that's, that's what Chapter 4 is about. And, uh, you know, you should pay attention to it, learn from it, and uh, that'll help you rank in, uh, you know, in, uh, in the search engine result pages. So that's it. I hope this has been helpful. This is Claude Polan at Affiliate Starting Line. Stay with it, stay well, and we'll talk to you soon.